All right, so in 6-4, we are talking about the slope of a line. Slope is simply a ratio that describes the steepness and direction of a line. Slope is often referred to as rise over run. Rise being the up and down movement, and run being the left and right movement. The slope can be described in one of four ways. The one on the far left, if you read it from the left to the right, it's going up. That is a positive slope. The second one that is moving down from left to right is a negative slope. If you get a horizontal line, that is a zero slope. And a vertical line is no slope. So there is a difference between zero slope and no slope. Not the same thing. Zero slope, no slope, not the same thing. If we are given two points that lie on a line, it doesn't matter if the two points are really close together or if the points are really far apart. I can use this formula, m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 to find the slope of the line. The little ones and twos simply mean that you have two different x's and two different y's. The little ones and twos, they're not exponents, they're called subscripts because they're below the letter, that you have two different x's and two different y's. Um, why they put the two first, I don't know. It doesn't matter which one comes first as long as you're consistent. So yes, you have to know this formula. Y is on top, x is on the bottom. So here's my little trick to remember that. If you had a y on the bottom, and let's say this was like a table, and the Y was the base of the table, it would fall over because it would only have one leg. But if the X was on the bottom of the table, then it has two legs to stand on and it doesn't fall over, okay? So the biggest mistake people make on these is they switch them, they have it backwards. So you have to remember that X is on the bottom, Y is on the top, and that you are subtracting that. Okay, so we're gonna find the slope. So again, remember, it doesn't matter which y and x you begin with as long as you do it the same for both. So my m equals, so this is x and y, and this is my other x and y. So I'm gonna take y minus y, so zero minus five over negative two minus one. So again, I'm taking my y minus the other y, and then my x minus the other x. And I just do the calculation, punch into your calculator, negative five over negative three, which we will always simplify to positive. Negative divided by negative is a positive. My answer is 5 thirds. Leave it as an improper fraction. Um, is the x always going to come first? Um, like the 2 and the 1? I always use this one first. Okay. It doesn't matter if you go from here to here or here to here. It doesn't matter. But like x is always going to be? No, it's y minus y. Yeah. Okay. Oh, x is always first in the order of pairs? Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then are we always going to subtract? Always subtract. Oh, always subtract. Well, okay. you'll just wait a second. Oh, okay. The answer is yes, but not always yes. We'll see. Okay, next example. Again, it's an ordered pair. It's two ordered pairs. So I'm going to take y, which is 4, minus the other y, which is negative 3, 
So yes, it's always subtraction, but, and then your x, which is negative three, minus the other x, which is negative two. So use your calculator if you need to, but these minus negatives become plus positives. So Emmeline, so like when I just said you always subtract, yes, you always subtract, but when you subtract a negative, it will convert to positive. Oops. So then I have four plus three, seven, negative three plus two, negative one. Would you make that one positive or just keep it? Nope. You just keep it like that. Okay. Alright, so in my next example, xy, xy. So I'm gonna take y, which is zero, minus the other y, negative five. x, which is 7, minus my other x, which is also 7. So again, I'm taking my y, 0, minus the other y, negative 5, and then x, which is 7, minus the other x, which is also 7. This minus minus becomes plus plus, and I have 0 plus 5 is 5, and seven minus seven is zero. Now, if you were to plug that into your calculator, <coughs> you would get an error message. So this particular calculation tells me that I have no slope. Zero cannot be in the denominator. This line would have no slope. And if I go back up to my pictures that I talked about earlier, it's a vertical line. If I drew those points and connected them, I would get a vertical line. So zero on the bottom, no slope. All right, next question. M equals Y, which is three, minus the other Y, which is 11 over x, which is 4, minus my other x, which is 1. 3 minus 11 is negative 8. 4 minus 1 is 3. My answer is negative 8 thirds. And my last one. Again, two ordered pairs. It doesn't matter which one you start with, just start with the same one for both x and y. So y, which is 6, minus my other y, which is 6. So y minus the other y over x, which is 9 minus my other x, which is three. So I have zero over six. Six minus six is zero. Nine minus three is six. And if you punch that into your calculator, it gives you zero. So zero on the top is zero. That would be a, from our pictures up above, a horizontal line, a zero slope. So zero slope and no slope are two different things. Zero on the bottom gives you a no slope. Zero on the top gives you zero. So oh. know the definite difference between those two. If you're not sure, punch it in your calculator. This one gives you an error message, no slope. This one gives you zero. Oh. 